Hey there, my wedding planning friends, and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on my video. I'm Emily Summer. I'm a wedding planner based in Montana, and I make weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice. All right, so you've seen the title of this video, so you know that today we're talking about something that is not a super fun and glamorous part of wedding planning, but I think it's an important discussion to have as I know there are a lot of couples out there that are kind of contemplating the idea of having a prenuptial or postnuptial agreement. And this can be kind of a taboo topic and one of those things that people don't want to address or talk about when it comes to wedding planning. It's not the fun and creative side of choosing your colors or your flowers or your venue, but I recently did a video on marriage licenses and everything you should know about that, not really knowing how many people would be interested in it. And y'all blew that video up. So it showed me that you do care about the more legal, less fun parts of weddings. So I do think it's an important topic to at least have a conversation about. Now I want to preface this video by saying I am not a lawyer. I am not providing any legal advice or recommendations. This is simply a video to provide you with basic knowledge of what a prenuptial agreement is and how to enter into one. So I totally understand the notion of not wanting to sign or even talk about a prenup prior to your marriage or prior to wedding planning in the process of wedding planning as it's there's this notion that it's like a bad omen to go into your wedding with the idea that you're going to be, that it's going to end essentially. Like your prenup is to kind of protect you and your partner in the event that a divorce occurs or something happens where you are no longer married. So I, I totally understand that and I get the idea behind that. But a way that you should go about thinking this is when you go to buy a new car, you're going to get insurance on that car. And it's not that you are getting insurance because you are going in with the with the plan that you're gonna crash that car and you're gonna total it and you're no longer gonna have a car, right? You're going to just have insurance in the event that something were to happen, you are protected. You would not buy a brand new car without having it insured. So that's just one way that you can kind of go into it without it being an automatic negative. It's just a way to protect yourself and your partner in the event that something were to happen. It isn't saying that there's going to be something happen happening and by entering into a prenup, there is no preconceived notion that you think there is going to be something that happens to your marriage. I think that many couples in general fail to have necessary financial conversations on any end of the spectrum, whether this is regarding a prenuptial agreement or just finances in general. And I think that when you fail to have these discussions prior to your marriage, it opens the door for a lot of really difficult conversations and difficult situations once you're already married married. Of course, marriage is a happy and wonderful thing and we want to be focusing on the good and the light and the pretty parts of marriage and wedding. But there is also a very practical and legal side that comes to having a, a marriage and having a wedding. You are legally binding yourself to another individual for life, essentially. So while of course weddings and marriage is all about love, you do want to be thinking somewhat practically and have these practical and legal conversations as well. So first of all, what is a prenup? So a prenup is a written contract for engaged couples that states their rights and responsibilities regarding the premarital and marital assets and debt and what would happen should the marriage end in divorce or death. So basically a prenup just states what happens, who gets what and any assets that you might have or your partner has, who possesses those after, after the marriage ends for whatever reason. So the process to entering a prenuptial agreement is typically the, the partner that has either um, a higher income, much higher income, or the greater amount of assets is typically who will retain the attorney that will create the prenuptial agreement. The other partner then would hire counsel to review and negotiate these terms and then any back and forth that might need to occur to reach an agreement between both partners. So there is something called a postnup as well. So you kind of have the option to do a, a prenuptial agreement or a postnuptial agreement. And just as the name would suggest, prenup, uh, everything is finalized prior to the actual wedding where you are legally married. 
and a post-nuptial agreement happens after the wedding has already occurred. So reasons that you would have a post-nuptial agreement would be things like there's an inheritance that is going to be, that is forthcoming and it might not be finalized until after the wedding or, or similarly other assets that might come into your possession after the wedding. Things that are kind of inbound that aren't going to be finalized by the time the wedding actually occurs or if there's negotiations that aren't finalized by the time your, your actual wedding happens, that's when a post-nuptial agreement would occur. Now, when it comes to cost, there's obviously costs associated with um, contracting a, a prenuptial agreement as there are lawyer, lawyer and legal fees that are going to play a part in this, of course. So typically there's, there's a lot of factors that can go into the cost of a prenup and this really depends on the complexity of the agreement, the complexity of the assets that you're dealing with, and just a lot of factors that can go into it. So typically they range from about 1500 all the way up to like 10,000 or more, again, depending on the complexity. A post-nuptial agreement can be a little bit pricier as that typically is a little bit more complex. You are dealing with assets and more entanglement since you are already legally bound by law. So why get a prenup? There are many reasons that a couple might enter into a prenuptial agreement. Here are some of the most common reasons. Number one is children. If one or both partners have children either together or individually, they will often enter into a prenuptial agreement so that it is protecting the financial rights and assets for the child. So this is things like future inheritance for the child, college educations, uh, trust funds, anything like that. So that anything is kind of set aside or allotted for the child isn't going to be affected by any sort of divorce negotiations. Number two, this is probably the most common reason and something that you are most familiar with, and that is when one individual is wealthier, significantly wealthier typically, or has a significant, significantly larger amount of assets than the other partner. Basically, the main reason for this would be to protect those assets and make sure that the other partner isn't marrying just for money. I think that's a, you know something that we are very familiar with hearing about. So having that prenuptial agreement is basically enforcing that if, if it were to end, the other spouse isn't going to try and take everything that they have and just marry so that they could get a good big payout at the end of, of, of the marriage, right? Number three is kind of on the flip side. If one of the partners has a significant amount of debt, uh, you can enter into a prenuptial agreement so that if something were to happen, uh, that partner's significant amount of debt does not fall on the other individual or, or if that partner fails to pay their debt, that it does not become the sole responsibility of the other individual. Number four is if one or both of the partners own a business. This is very similar to a child. The business is kind of like a form of a child in different ways, of course. But from a financial standpoint, um, a prenup would essentially quantify the other partner's involvement or interests slash shares in this business of the other individual. Number five is previous marriages. Perhaps there was a previous marriage that ended in a nasty divorce. So moving forward, they want to have a prenuptial agreement in any future marriage they enter into just to protect themselves after a maybe not so great experience previously. Number six is protecting an inheritance or a future inheritance. So basically maybe there, there isn't a big difference in the income or the wealth or the assets of the partners at the time of marriage, but you know that there is a future inheritance that will be coming down the road. Maybe this is years and years in advance. And so similarly to protecting the, the wealth and inheritance of a current partner, this is basically protecting the future wealth and future inheritance of that partner. And number seven, if there are discussions that have been made about one of the partners being a stay-at-home parent, this would result in obviously no form of income for that individual. And so if the, the marriage were to end, that individual has not been earning any sort of income. This way you are protecting yourself in that instance if you are the, the parent that is staying at home and not earning your own income. If something were to happen, you aren't left completely high and dry. So this prenuptial agreement can protect that stay at home parent in the event that the marriage did end. So I understand that talking about finance and prenuptial agreements in specifically can be a very delicate conversation. And the way that this should be introduced and brought up to your partner is obviously going to vary depending on your relationship and the way that you communicate, but it should always be entered delicately. And a great opportunity to bring this up is when you are discussing financials 
of wedding planning in general. This kind of opens the window to any sort of financial conversation. And if this topic doesn't come up organically without that, this is a great window to discuss finance in, in general. This should be discussed with care and empathy towards your partner and make sure that it is a, a loving conversation and that you are not coming at it in a, a defensive manner. Um, if you're concerned about this conversation and being able to have this open communication about finance, if you're doing any sort of pre-marital counseling, this is a great environment to open this discussion so that you can have a kind of moderator there to help with this discussion. An important thing to remember and a helpful tip is it is not necessary that you have to both be completely on the same page and agree about everything. It's just important that you come to somewhat of an understanding with each other and that you are listening to each other's needs and desires and coming to a place of understanding and agreement. I understand that this is not the most fun topic to talk about or think about, especially in relation to wedding planning, but I'm a huge advocate for being financially independent, especially for women. And I think it's just so important to be having these financial conversations, regardless of the income that you make or your partner makes, just so that you are aware of where you stand financially and what those finances are going to look like as you enter into a legally binding marriage. If you made this far thank you for bearing with me through a not so fun topic hopefully you found this video helpful if you did please like and subscribe to get weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice and we'll see you next week